Marvel Comics present Creator's Choice, Volume 1. Featuring the X-Men and starring Stan Lee, Bob Harris, Fabian Niciesa, and Scott Lobdell. 30 years of history, you walk into Martin Goodman's office, you want to come up with the X-Men, you want to publish the book, how'd it come about? Really very strange. We had been creating comics, there was the Spider-Man, there was the Hulk, a few others, and, and it's very difficult to figure out how a superhero becomes a superhero. You can't keep having characters bitten by a radioactive spider or hit by a, a gamma ray or zapped by cosmic rays. Then it occurred to me there are such things as mutants. Well, if you could say, and we have, a, I think, three of them right here. <laughs> if you could say that somebody is just a mutant, he was just born that way, that's a, a logical explanation, an easy explanation, mm -hmm. and I can forget about radioactivity. So we thought, let's get a group of super characters who had obtained their powers through mutancy. They were born that way. And it, it just made life so easy, and we were able to get this big team going. I'll tell you a funny thing about that, though. When I first suggested it, I wanted to call the group the Mutants. And the consensus was that, no, nah, don't do that because nobody knows what a mutant is. And I said, that's crazy. Every, no, kids won't know. So we finally arrived at the name the X-Men. I thought of that because it's Professor Xavier, and they all had an extra power. And I said, all right, let's call them the X-Men. That name was okayed. And then it occurred to me, if they don't know what a mutant is, how is anybody going to know what an X-Man is? But I didn't say anything about it. I was glad we had a title, and the rest is history. Oh. Stan, do you remember how you came up with it? You and Jack came up with some of the original powers and you guys were working well, on Well, the stuff? powers are always the toughest things to think about because you always want something different. I remembered we had a character called the Human Torch who was very popular and he was a guy. I mean, it's an everyday occurrence. He could burst in flame and fly. So it occurred to me, why not do the opposite? So that was Iceman who turned into ice and right. he used the power of cold. Okay. Then it occurred to me, everybody has always wanted to fly. Well, in, in comics, superheroes usually, like Superman, he just flies. You don't quite know what propels him. I never figured that But I thought, <laughs> wouldn't it be fun to have a reason for it? So then we did the angel, who is now the archangel. Right. And he just had, I loved the way his wings wrapped around him. Mm -hmm. And he would then wear a suit over them, and nobody knew that he was the angel. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he was able to fly. Then it occurred to me that somebody using the power of his eyes would be fun. And of course, we try to make all of our super characters vulnerable or a little tragic in some way. So he was really cursed with this because he had to wear these dark glasses. And if ever he didn't wear... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been meaning to do this. <laughs> so even though it was a blessing, it was a curse. And who are the others? Marvel Girl, that was pretty obvious. She'd use mental powers. And Beast. She'd... And the Beast I loved very much because I wanted to go against type with him. Mm -hmm. He looked like a real bestial guy. So I tried to make him the most articulate right. and the most erudite all right. of all of them, you know. And I think one thing we've always tried to do at Marvel is go a little bit against type. Oh, Having a woman on the team to begin with was, was different. A, a was different. Change, a but now the X-Men can have, you know, entire groups of women. Is it is hardly a man to be seen for an issue or two, and, uh, <laughs> and people like it because they like the characters. Like That's the diversity, it. Yeah. The character. Right. <laughs> the thing that I found fascinating watching the pilot the very first time at home on a Saturday was there was a scene where they had like four of the X-Women and two X-Men characters, and I was thinking, I think it's very fascinating that, that kids all over America are watching a show that comes out so strongly on, on the strengths of women as superheroes and stuff. You know, people are willing to accept really strong women characters. Well, the popularity of the, the female books. characters. And yeah. Rogue, Rogue, the Rogue and Storm, Storm and Jean Grey are three of the most popular characters on the team. The X-Men are still one of the only groups that have youngsters, oldsters, girls, boys, men, women, mm -hmm. of all colors, all age, mm -hmm. sexes, and I think it just works. It wasn't planned that right. carefully at the beginning, but mainly thanks to guys like you who took it up later on and have made it so much better than it was when it began. And I want to take this opportunity publicly to oh, thank you, and man. I'll never say it again, so keep this But keep forever. the tape. Well, I'll take your kids at home listen to this. He's thanking us.